Hello from the Florida Department of Environmental Protection, Submerged Lands and Environmental Resource Program. This presentation will be about reduction and elimination of impacts to wetlands and surface waters. Elimination and reduction of impacts is considered by the Florida Department of Environmental Protection during review of environmental resource permit applications in the state of Florida. Let's define elimination and reduction. Elimination is the removal of all impacts to wetlands and surface waters, while reduction is reducing the acreage or severity of impacts to wetlands and surface waters. Why should applicants eliminate and reduce impacts? Before we discuss why elimination and reduction is important, it's essential to understand why wetlands and surface waters are important and in need of protection. Wetlands are nature's kidneys. Just as your kidneys scrub and eliminate toxins from your body, wetlands scrub and eliminate toxins from the environment. Stormwater runoff laden with pollution from roads, lawn fertilizers, and other pollutants flow directly into wetlands, where wetland plants and bacteria found in the wetland soils act as filters. The plants and bacteria take up excess nitrogen, phosphorus, and other pollutants from the water, and in some cases, transform the pollutants to different chemical forms that are less toxic to fish and wildlife. The filtered water is slowly released into streams, lakes, oceans, and aquifers. This filtration process prevents algal blooms, fish kills, dead zones, and contamination of surface and groundwaters, including your drinking water, that might otherwise occur if the pollutants enter the water bodies untreated. Wetlands and other surface waters provide spawning ground, nesting areas, rich food sources, and drinking water for many kinds of animals and plants. Some of these plants and animals are directly important to our human economy and recreation. Some of the animals and plants that live in or depend on wetlands and other surface waters are endangered or threatened. Many others are food sources for economically important species. Florida has a heavily tourism-based economy because everybody wants to see our beautiful wetlands and waters. Many of the tax dollars that are used to provide valuable services to Florida residents, such as education and roads, come from the money that tourists spend on hotels, goods, services, and entertainment. Wetlands protect Florida's water quality. Tourists come here to relax near our clean water and vibrant wildlife. Protecting wetlands is a good investment for the state of Florida. Perhaps one of the most personal and tangible environmental services provided by wetlands is flood control. Wetlands are usually low-lying areas in the landscape that absorb storm water and prevent floods. When a wetland is filled, the excess storm water has nowhere to go and can back up onto residential and commercial properties causing a lot of expensive damage to homes and businesses. Finally, protection of wetlands is the law of the land. Under the Federal Clean Water Act, there can be no net loss of wetland functions in the United States. Wetland functions include all the things we just talked about. Filling a wetland causes loss of filtration for water quality, habitat, and flood control. You might think, if there can be no net loss of wetland functions, why are we allowed to fill any wetlands at all? Government agencies realize that sometimes wetland impacts are unavoidable. So if wetland impacts cannot be avoided, they can be compensated or made up for with mitigation. Mitigation is creating equal wetland functions somewhere else for the loss of wetland functions caused by filling a wetland. Please see our other video on mitigation for more information. Mitigation is another reason to eliminate and reduce impacts. Mitigation can be expensive. Generally, the larger the wetland impact, the more mitigation you will need and the more money it will cost. Alternatively, smaller impacts require less mitigation, which costs less money. We have two examples to show you what it means to eliminate and reduce wetland impacts. Example 1 is a single-family home project involving fill for a house pad and driveway. The original proposal included the driveway and foyer in the green shaded wetlands. 
you can see there is some upland space available that is not being utilized. The agencies called the applicant and requested that they move as much of the structure as possible into uplands to eliminate and reduce their wetland impacts. The applicant then brought a new plan to the agency that utilized the upland area for the driveway and foyer instead of the wetlands. The agencies decided that the applicant reduced the wetland impact by moving as much of the structure as possible into uplands and making the garage foyer area smaller. The project can now be approved and permitted so long as the applicant provides sufficient mitigation to make up for the remaining loss of wetland function caused by filling for a part of the house. Example 2 is a proposed apartment complex. The applicant originally came in with a plan for 21 buildings and a large amount of wetland fill. The agency suggested that the applicant modify the project by reducing the number of apartment buildings to 16 and keeping almost the whole project in the uplands. The applicant calculated the cost of the project itself and the estimated appraised value of the completed project and found that the project would not be financially viable if it did not have 17 buildings. The applicant rearranged the buildings and redesigned the road to minimize their wetland impact. The agencies decided that the applicant reduced and eliminated the wetland impact as much as practicable. Practicable is another word for feasible. Practical in this case means that the applicant reduced and eliminated the wetland impacts as much as financially feasible without causing the project to be non-viable. With the changes to the amount of impact, the project can be approved and permitted with appropriate mitigation. Let's look at other ways to eliminate and reduce wetland impacts. By keeping all structures and fill in the uplands if possible, proposing piling supported structures, utilizing stem wall foundations in lieu of fill slopes, proposing to build smaller structures, also proposing to build multi-story structures, and utilizing sewer systems instead of septic systems. Also, do not propose pools or large decks in wetlands. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about this video or about a project you are considering, please contact the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. Please view our other videos for more permitting hot topics.